So, hey everybody, welcome to Go Bold. Uh, we are here at Comox Air Force Base in British Columbia, and I'm joined with Captain Mark Andre Plant, who is a pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force Snowbirds Air Demonstration Team. Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you on the program. Um, so as I do with all of my guests, I start by asking, what made you join the military and what made you pick the branch that you did? Uh, yeah, well, I'd say I'm second generation military. So my dad was an uh, avionics technician, uh, worked on uh, F-18 weapon systems, worked on the Aurora. So I got to, and then uh, is still actually currently teaching at the uh, school in Borden. Cool. Um, so that's where I got to live as a kid, just all, all those areas. Uh, so that obviously got me interested in the military aviation, uh, just seeing the snowbirds, seeing just aircraft all the time. Uh, and as far as what I wanted to do, I guess initially I wanted to do uh, maintenance or engineering. Uh, and then through the Air Cadet program, they convinced me to try out the gliding uh, scholarship. Uh, and then I did the power scholarship. And then at that point on, I think it was pretty evident to me that I enjoyed flying um, and I continued. I wanted to pursue that in the military. Uh, following kind of my father's footsteps, but uh, going the, the pilot route instead. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about your military career now. Um, and by the way, this is the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. So it's pretty cool that you're part of the Snowbirds team for this really historic milestone. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, tell me a little bit about your, your career path thus far. Uh, yeah, so my career path, I started went to the Royal Military College uh, first to get my degree in aeronautical engineering. So still kind of going towards that other path that I was interested in, um, studying that. And then I started my flight training in 2015 uh, out in Moose Jaw. So did, uh, flew the Harvard. I continued on to the Hawk, which would have been the jet route. Uh, and then following my Hawk conversion, uh, I stayed back as an instructor on the Harvard too. And I continued there for about uh, four years uh, where I built up the experience uh, to be able to try out to the Snowbirds. And I tried out and got accepted in 2021 to join the 2022 team as Snowbird 2. And then I moved to Snowbird 8 last year. Fantastic. And so Snowbird 8, for those that aren't aware, uh, well, actually, if you don't mind, uh, perhaps a better way to ask is um, tell me about the Snowbirds team overall, the number of jets, uh, the position you previously flew, and, and now you're flying Jet 8 and where exactly that is in the formation. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the team itself is comprised of 11 jets. Uh, we'll have nine doing the air demonstration, but we still have the other two pilots as well that will fly the spare jets and they are advanced and safety pilot are, and our uh, announcers. So we call them the coordinators. Uh, so that'd be Snowbirds 10 and 11. Uh, Snowbird 1 is obviously the boss. Uh, so he's out in front and uh, leading us through all the um, everything, transits and uh, air demonstrations and everything. Uh, and then Snowbirds 2 and 3 would be the inner pilots, so the inner right and left wing pilots. They're basically the core of the stability of the formation. Uh, they fly the closest to the boss and they provide stability for all the outer pilots that fly outside of them. Mm -hmm. uh, 4 and 5 are the stem pilots, so first line of stern and second line of stern. So they're the ones who are directly behind the boss and provide a stable spine for any time the formation moves back and forward uh, so we fly off of the, the stem pilots. Uh, six and seven are the outer pilots. They basically, the best way to put them is they, they give the formations their shape almost. They move probably the most out of all the, the formation pilots to give the formation kind of their distinct shape. Uh, so they're in our big diamond formation. They're kind of in the back um, just beside four and five. But at any given time, they're pretty much anywhere, just like I said, kind of giving that shape. And then eight and nine, we're on the outside of the formation. Uh, so we're the solos and our job is in formation, we'll kind of we'll we'll be just on that outside there for big diamond. But most of the time, when you're seeing the seven plane, it's because we're out there kind of doing the distraction. So we're going to do the crosses, we're going to do the heart, we're going to do a lot of the the quick repositions. Um, the uh, we put a lot of that energy in with the low level aerobatics and the crossing maneuvers. And uh, yeah, I love that that job in particular because I get the best of both worlds. I get to fly in formation, uh, and I also get to have a lot of fun with the low level aerobatics. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. You know, one might think that the boss has the best job, but I think you <laughs> you, you probably do. Uh, so are, 
in the Snowbirds, is there a lead and an opposing solo, or is it not characterized that way? Uh, it is. So the lead and the opposing will vary by number for the year. So as a new solo, you're immediately the opposing solo. So your job is to, well, miss the lead solo, uh, but make it look like you're hitting them to the crowd. Uh, so there's a, a little bit of finesse there, uh, an art behind making the hit, which we call it, where you're obviously very safe. We're still about uh, two to three aircraft widths apart, um, but making it look to the crowd like we are hitting. That's the big job of the opposing solo. That's only possible with a stable lead solo. So the lead solo's job, with that experience of at least one year of being a solo, is flying nice, stable lines. So I'm calling when the opposing pulls up. Um, I'm calling all our smoke calls. I initiate the contact. And my job is to be as stable as possible so that the opposing solo could more easily miss me but still provide that hit to the crowd. Uh, and I have to take into consideration wind and timing errors and uh, I also reposition us around the, the, the boss's formation as well um, throughout the show. So there's a lot of coordination between the lead solo and the boss on how we integrate the whole show together between large formations and the solos there is the like we say, the distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. Uh, so tell me about flying the Tudor. What, uh, what do you love most about this jet? Well, having flown the Harvard and the Hawk, I find like it's probably the best of both of those. Uh, it is a pure jet. There's no tur turbo fan. It's a, it's a full turbo jet. So lots of power and very responsive uh, throttle. Uh, it flies like a jet, um, but it has the slow speed handling of a turboprop like the Harvard. So it's really fun with formation stuff because it allows us to do loops and rolls so close within your field of view that everything's happening in front of you. And it allows us to reposition very quickly and keep a very, very tight show. The flying itself, like I said, it handles like a jet, so it rolls pretty quick. It's handles G uh, easily, so we could sustain 5G no problem with a with the tutor, um, so it's just it's just a blast to fly, and it's all hands and feet, which I, I feel like it just goes to the core of what's really fun to like as a pilot to fly an aircraft, which is all hands and feet. It's just it doesn't get any better than that. A true pilot aircraft. Yeah, yeah, right on. Well, uh, if you don't mind, uh, could you show us a little bit of the cockpit? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll follow you saddling up. I'll hop on in. Oh, missed it. There you go. Sweet. So this is what we are now calling kind of the legacy cockpit uh, because we are going through an upgrade right now to upgrade uh, the jets to um, a modernized cockpit, which is a glass cockpit. So it'll be more touch screens, full displays, multifunctional displays, which is pretty awesome. The boss has one right now. Uh, and then uh, Snowbirds 4 and 5 would be the next ones to get uh, the upgrades as they come through. Okay. Uh, but for, for myself, this is, this is my office. Um, basically know what every switch does and uh, during a show I find myself more so focused on the G meter because we fly G related profiles uh, the altitude obviously because I want to make sure I'm keeping well this this case the uh, change there but anyways <laughs> the uh, the al altimeter so obviously we set to zero uh, when we're at a show site and I always have to stay above 300 feet during a show uh, which is still quite low it's uh, lower than many buildings or radio towers that you might see sure um, and then uh, the airspeed where i remain predictable so i always stay 300 feet 300 knots and that's how i fly that straight line uh, predictable line for the opposing solo to miss me awesome awesome i love it well it it's uh it's a great job that you've got representing the royal canadian air force and uh and the canadian armed forces as a whole and particularly this year being the 100th anniversary uh it's it's awesome and and you are relatively early in your career uh where where would you like to go after after your tour with the snowbirds yeah um well i guess i'd like to start saying yeah, i think it is an absolute honor it, i mean it's an honor to just be a part of the team in general with the snowbirds uh, and it is like that honor is just enhanced even further the fact that I get to be part of the team during such a momentous year with the 100th anniversary and to be able to share that uh, with all Canadians across North America and going to multiple air bases and demonstrating kind of that, that skilled professionalism teamwork that is inherent in all the members of the Canadian Armed Forces. So it's, it's an absolute honor, like I said, to be part of the team and especially to be part of the RCF during such a year. Where I'd like to go after this, uh, 
I consider this kind of, I mean, I don't want to say I've hit my peak as far as the, uh, the, the flying and what I get to do, but I do want to keep um, uh, working with the Air Force, uh, staying in the military. And uh, my goal is to move over to Maritime Patrol helicopters uh, and ideally out in Victoria, uh, flying the Cyclone. And uh, I think it would just be a really cool experience to just try a different kind of platform. I'm used to fixed wing jets. I think uh, it'd be really cool to learn how to fly helicopters and then uh, also learn kind of the automation involved with something like a fly-by-wire helicopter like the Cyclone, which would be pretty exciting. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's one of the great things about being in the Air Force is that there's a lot of platforms that, you know, you could, could potentially fly. So, uh, Captain Plant, uh, I, I thank you so much for being here on Go Bold, and I really, really uh, wish you success in your career and, and hope you get your, uh, you know, your next choice. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate, uh, well, I appreciate you coming and uh, asking all these great questions, too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing your show. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.
as it follows a relatively light aircraft to speeds of over 400 knots. With the exceptional maintenance of the Z from our pilot and highly qualified senior technicians, the tuner continues to serve as a terrific platform for the Stubbards aerial demonstration.